Let's look at how to split suspension cell lines step by step. I'm Corey, Cell Culture Group Leader at Cell Signaling Technology, and this is CST Tech Tips. Splitting cells on a regular basis is important for maintaining optimal health of your cells. If you haven't seen our intro to splitting cells, click the pop-up link in the corner to watch that video first, and then come back to this video. Today we'll demonstrate the steps for splitting suspension cell lines. If you are culturing an adherent cell line rather than a suspension cell line, we will be publishing a separate video on that. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell icon to get notified when new tech tip videos go live. Okay, let's begin the demonstration. Inspect the health and density of your suspension cell lines using a microscope. If they are ready to be split, place a bottle of the appropriate media with any supplements needed in a warm bath. Following sterile technique, bring the warm media, the cells to be split, and any needed consumables into the hood. If performing a cell count, pipette up and down to ensure an even suspension of the cells, and remove an aliquot for counting. As a reminder, pipette carefully at all times, but especially when resuspending a cell suspension, and avoid drawing liquid into the filter or pipette aid body. Revert to our blog on counting cells for guidance on counting cells with automated counters or manually with a hemocytometer. We'll leave a link to the blog below this video. If the cells are ready to be split, resuspend the cells by pipetting and transfer the desired volume to a new cell culture vessel, which may be dishes, roller bottles, or flasks. Add enough volume of warmed media to each vessel to bring it to the desired volume per vessel and gently mix to dilute the suspension. Use a marker to label the exterior of the vessel, noting the cell line, date, and passage number. Then place the dishes in the incubator. Why is it a good practice to track the number of times cells have been split? After a finite number of divisions, non-transformed cells exit the cell cycle and become senescent. This could affect not only your ability to propagate cells, but also how cells respond to experimental stimuli. To learn more about senescence, check out the Tech Tips video by clicking the pop-up link in the corner. One final tip on maintaining cell lines is related to reproducibility. Even if you use good sterile technique, mistakes can sometimes happen. Cell lines can become misidentified or cross-contaminated either with other cell lines or the dreaded mycoplasma contamination. Any of these could negatively affect your data and experimental reproducibility. Fortunately, at least for human cell lines, it is possible to check if misidentification has occurred by using short tandem repeat or STR profiling. To learn more, read our blog on STR profiling. We'll include a link below this video. That wraps it up for this video. If you found any of these tips helpful, hit the like and share buttons to help your fellow scientists find this video and subscribe to our channel. If you have a question about a CSD antibody, kit, or product, you can always get in touch with our scientists at cellsignal.com support. Thanks for watching and good luck with your experiments.